Did you know that 50% of human DNA is related to bananas? No, it's not because our ancestors ate bananas. The 50% figure approximately indicates that half of our genes have counterparts in bananas. The other percentage is unique apart from humans and bananas. Also, did you know that the tomato was the first GMO food to reach the market? Before, tomatoes are easy to rot. Now, not really. Let's get on with our discussion. Genetically modified organisms, or GMO, is a product of biotechnology, which is bio biology-based technology, which uses organisms or their parts to make or modify products or improve plants, animals, and microorganisms. GMO falls under modern biotechnology, wherein genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology is applied. Recombinant DNA technology is a method that allows the combination of genes in a test tube to form a hybrid DNA. GMOs are hybrid organisms. They are living organisms whose genetic, genetic material has been artificially altered. They carry an introduced gene that is not present in the germoplasm of the organism. This introduced gene usually carries economically important traits such as higher yield for crops and higher milk production for animals and plants. Now, we ask, are GMOs safe? Of course there are. Genetically modified foods that are currently available on the international market have passed safety assessments and are not likely to present risks for human health. Besides, no effect on human health have been shown as a result of the consumption for foods by the general population in the countries where they have been approved. How about the labels? All food that's genetically engineered should be labeled regardless of whether the GMO material is detectable and disclosure statements should be made through labels with clear, understandable terms. GMOs are subjected to careful study to ensure that they are substantially equivalent to non-GMOs be before they are released commercially. Hence, no new allergens are introduced to the organism. That's why there are approved GMOs here in the Philippines. The most common GMO that is produced widely in our country is corn. The, trans the gene transferred to the corn's genome allows the plant to produce a toxin that is pesticidal to only its target organisms, specific specifically the Lepidoptera, an order of insects including moths and butterflies. Many GMO crops are used to make foods that Americans consume, such as cornstarch, corn syrup, corn oil, soy oil, and many more. Some fresh fruits and vegetables are, are available in GMO varieties, including potatoes, summer squash, apples, papayas, tomatoes, and more. It poses no threats to us humans since we do not have receptors to which the toxic protein binds. GMOs are safe to consume because they are relatively similar to their conventional counterparts, only except for their traits. GMO crops are relatively recent and researchers have no understanding of the long-term health and safety consequences. There are many safety issues concerning GMO crops and evidence differs about them. Further work would be required to conclude. Now you must be thinking, what are the pros and cons of such product? Well, the pros, crops grow quicker have more nutrients, produce more yield, and are resistant, resistant to pesticides. Also, they use less fertilizer. Also, the artificial implantation of DNA from one species to another will save many years of study, which means that GMO testing can be used to modify animals and potentially human cells that are healthier or desirable. Although, with pros comes the cons, which means that, which, is, which are that GMOs are not always tested thoroughly and that it could affect those with allergies in unpredictable ways. Also, testing often involves performing experiments upon animals, which some people uh, feel is a breach of animal rights, which is reasonable. Also, did you know that bees benefit from these GMOs? More than 10 years ago, the sudden and widespread disappearance of adult honeybees from hives called the Colony Collapse Disorder, or the CCD, became a national concern. Claims circulated that such GMO crops are toxic to bees. These assertions have been debunked by the mainstream science community. 
Scientists have engineered bees through genetic engineering, which may cause bees to be resistant to the disease. Think of it as vaccines for them. This is a long and complicated process, but once done, bee health could be improved by leaps and bounds. So, why are GMOs important today? Let's discuss. Since the genetic modification can make plants disease resistant and herbicide tolerant, the process can increase the amount of food that farmers can produce. This will drive down costs and lead to food health. It will make it so that it's possible that we have a sustainable food source. Also, deeming it possible for having enhanced nutrient composition and food quality. More importantly, it will reduce the use of pesticides. Pesticides can cause short-term adverse health effects as well as chronic adverse effects that can occur months or years after exposure. Some of these effects are uh, stinging eyes, rashes, blisters, blindness, and many more. Also in the medical field, it's possible that GMOs will have benefits. Also, we shouldn't forget that it's possible that GMOs will have an economic impact on farmers and consumers causing it to have economic growth. If we're going to think and ponder on the possibilities of GMOs in our lives, then we need to think further. Imagine the possibilities of GMOs in the medical field. As I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of opportunities in research, especially genetics. Genetic modification is already one example of this. In relation to this, there would be an advancement in the field of science and technology not to mention having a positive economic impact, which benefits farmers, consumers, and more people in our society. Lastly, there'd be positive environmental contributions. By reducing the use of pesticides, we'd be able to enjoy our food without the harmful effects of pesticides. See? Thank you for listening to my talk. Once again, I'm Ivan Reyes, and we should think further and beyond.